do, do you ever feel like, I, I, maybe, I don't even think he's paying any attention to me. Maybe you look around and you see the people that are near you and you're thinking, well, I don't feel as close to him as they obviously are. You, we just got through worshiping and maybe you watched them worship and like, man, okay, wow, they were raising their hands. They had their eyes closed. They obviously are closer to God than me. Have you, have you ever felt like that? Today we are in the final week of a series that we have entitled Trust Him as a series where we're looking at, you know, oftentimes when things go sideways in our life, things get a little bit difficult, we will hear those words. Oh, well, just trust him. Just, just, just trust him. And, and that, that's, you know, it's easy to say to someone, it's, but it's harder to do when you're, when you're in, the, in the moment, when you're the one that needs to trust, and so we've been going through a series of of talks on okay, how do we trust him? This week, I think uh, I've saved the best to last. The one that I really feel like is, I think it's going to speak to all of us. I encourage you follow along with the message. All right, there's a scan code, a QR code that you can scan. It'll take you to a sermon where you can fill in the notes. If you have the app, pull that up. And um, the notes are located right there in the app. I want to begin with a question today. And the question is this. Do you ever wonder why you don't feel close to God? Do you ever wonder that? Do do you ever feel like, maybe, I don't even think he's paying any attention to me. Maybe... You look around and you see the people that are near you and you're thinking, well, I don't feel as close to him as they obviously are. You, we just got through worshiping and maybe you watched them worship and like, man, okay, wow, they were raising their hands. They had their eyes closed. They obviously are closer to God than me. Have you, have you ever felt like that? There's a portion of scripture that I think really does describe how you and I want to feel towards God. It was written by King David. And I want to begin with that. It's found in Psalm 16. And these are the words of David. Listen to what he says. He says, keep me safe, O God. He's, he's praying. He's talking to God. Keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. I've come to you for refuge. Now, real quickly, understand that David is declaring his trust in God in this moment. He's acknowledging that God is his refuge, and he's going to go on, and he's going to profess his trust in him, and he's going to talk about how I know that God will not abandon me. Like he's gonna be right there with me. Look what it says, verse eight, he says, I know the Lord is always with me. I wonder how many of us really would love to know that. He's always with me. He goes on, he says, I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice, my body rests in his in safety for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your holy one to rot in the grave you will show me the way of life granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasure of living with you forever i read this and i think that describes where so many of us want to be. Like, we want to know that God is there for us. We, we want to know that he's there. He hasn't abandoned us. He hasn't rejected us. It's not like he's not listening to us, but he is right there. And because we know that, we feel him. He's right beside us. Our, our hearts are made glad, and we can rejoice, and we can rest in that fact. We want that. But I really believe that a lot of us, instead of feeling that way and those kinds of feelings in life, we feel the exact 
opposite. We feel the heaviness and the pressure of being abandoned. We feel the heaviness and the pressure of rejection and being forgotten. And it happens in so many ways. Some of you, it it could have started years and years ago when you were young, maybe your father or your mother, they walked out on you. They left you and, and, and even now, even now you feel rejected. Like why would they do that? What is it about me that caused that to happen? It could be a close friend, a friendship that you poured everything into. You poured so much into it, and and yet they walked away. Like, wow, why would that, why would they do that? Or or maybe it was someone that you you dated, and they just you felt like they abandoned you. Like we we feel these feelings, we wrestle with them. It could be your spouse rejected you or they abandoned you, and, and it literally ripped your heart out. And and as painful as all of those little examples are, you know what is probably more painful than any of those? Is when we feel rejected and abandoned by God. It happens. And if you ever feel this way, you're not alone. Even, even King David, like this, the one that just talked about how I know the Lord is always with me. Like the Lord, he brings me rest. Even him, we see later in scripture where he wrestles with the presence of God. You, you go to Psalm 22 and he says this. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Like he's dealing with abandonment. He says, why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer me. And by night, but I find no rest. This is David. This is a man that God said is after my own heart. We we don't know what is going on in David's life. There's no real clear indicator here. Some think that it could be that David is fleeing from Saul, who is hunting him down, trying to kill him. Others think that it could be that that he is running from his son, Absalom. But, But whatever the case, he feels abandoned. By God, And we see this in, in throughout scripture. We see people like this. We see prophets like, like Elijah. Elijah, this strong prophet, one of, maybe one of the most famous of all of them. Elijah, after this big victory over the prophets of Baal. Just moments later, we read where he felt alone. He felt abandoned. So much so that he wished he had died. Really? Job? Think about Job. Go read the, the book of Job. Like Job, he felt this way. Job writes in one place, he says, I cry to you for help and you don't, you don't answer me. You ever felt that way? Like God, are you even paying attention to me? We see it, it's everywhere. Even Jesus. Think about the life of Jesus. The son of God, the the one who did everything that God asked, goes to the cross, sacrificed his life for the sins of man, and on the cross, what do we hear? What does he say? He says, my God, my God, why do you forsake me? At that moment, he felt God turn his back on him. Yeah. It's all throughout scripture. And if you've ever felt that way, you're not, you're not alone at all. Do you ever feel and wonder why you don't feel as close to God as maybe one time you did? If that's you, you're gonna have a hard time trusting him. And that's why today we're going to talk about that. 
Okay, and if you're gonna trust in God, you have to understand why it is that you feel the way that you feel. And I've entitled the message, Why Do You Feel Abandoned by God? And my goal today is to give some practical, biblical reasons as to why you feel this way. And I hope that you'll write this down. I hope you'll take notes. There are three of them, all right? Uh, There's probably a bunch more, but we only have time for three. And the first one is this. Why is it that you feel um, abandoned by God? Why is it that he feels so far away from you? It could be because you're looking for the extraordinary. And oftentimes, God works in the ordinary. It's very important to understand because we all want to see God do the extraordinary. And I want to be clear, he does. God does the extraordinary, but, but more often than not, he, he works in just the ordinary things. We, we see this even in Jesus and, and, and what Jesus dealt with in John chapter 6. Jesus is doing a lot of extraordinary things. He fed thousands and thousands of people with just a few pieces of bread and some fish. Jesus walks on water in John chapter 6. And, and also in John chapter 6, he's, he's talking to a group of people who say, you know, we, we want to serve God. Well, but what is it that we do? What, what, how is it that we do the works of God? And listen to this exchange that Jesus had with them. In John chapter 6, verse 28, he says, uh, they said to him, they're talking to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. Like, so just believe in me. Verse 30 says, so they said to him, then what signs do you do that we may see and believe you? Like, what work do you perform? See, that's what they want to see Jesus do. Jesus, we just, we want to see your tricks, we, we want to see what you can do. And if, and if you'll just you know, do your tricks, do your miracles, then, then that will help us. They wanted to see the extraordinary when oftentimes he just works in the ordinary. And so many of us, we're desperate for this. We, we, we want God to do the extraordinary. You know, we're trying to figure out, okay, you know, I've got this job right now, but this other opportunity has come open for me. Which one do I do? Do I leave this, this job, this place that I've been for 15 years, and do I go over here to this, this new adventure? God, tell me. You know, God, if you'll just do this. I, I want you, God, you remember how you, you, you wrote on the wall in the, new te- in the Old Testament? Remember how you did that, God? Can you just do that for me? Like, will you just let your hand appear and I just need you to write, what job am I supposed to take? What, what am I supposed to do, God? Okay, come on. God, I'm waiting. Just write it on the wall. And no writing. No extraordinary thing. It, it could be that you're dating someone right now and, and you're trying to figure out, oh, God, do you want me to, to break up with them? Do you want me to move on? And you're looking for the extraordinary you're like, God, I, I need to know, is there a replacement plan? You know, so God, if you want me to break up with them, then okay, right now at the count of three, God, I want you to, to bring in the next person for me and please, they have just gotta be awesome. So God, one, you hear me, God? Or are you listening? I, I, mean, I need to know what you want me to do. Two, three, and you're looking and nobody walks in. Like, I need the extraordinary. We all want the extraordinary. I've said this before and I'll say it again, you can't trust your feelings. You just, you can't. If, if, you're, if you always felt God, then you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have to have faith in God. You can't trust God. Your feelings, And so there are going to be times, maybe right now, you feel that God is at a distance. Maybe you feel like he's rejected you or he's abandoned you. And it could be that all you're looking for is the extraordinary. And God oftentimes works in the ordinary. But number two, if you're taking notes, it may be that you feel so far from God because your heart has grown dull. It's grown dull towards 
God. Maybe you have a dull heart. We see this in Scripture. Jesus dealt with this time and time again. In Matthew chapter 13, we see one place where Jesus, um, he talks about the pro- a prophecy that the prophet Isaiah brought out centuries before Jesus ever come, came along. The Bible says this in verse 14, says, Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, and what he's going to do is he's going to actually quote this, and he says, you will indeed hear, but never understand. So he's talking about people and how they perceive the faith, how they perceive him. He says, you will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, he says. So they have a hard heart. And with their ears, they can barely hear. And their eyes, they, can, they, they have closed. Least, he said, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, I would heal them. He's like, if they would just open up their eyes and see what is right before them, if they could just open up their ears and ears and hear what is right before them, if they would just do that, then I would heal them. But their heart has grown dull. How is it that our hearts grow dull? Oftentimes they grow dull when we get hurt. When someone hurts us, they grow dull. When Bitterness is kept close to us, unforgiveness, anger. Those kinds of things create a dull heart. It creates a hard heart. Other times we we see it when, when someone we love is hurting. When we're praying and we're asking God, God, you gotta do something. God, you gotta heal them and we don't see it. Like he doesn't do the extraordinary when we think he should do the extraordinary. It's in those moments that our heart gets hard And it grows dull towards him when we don't see answered prayer. Perhaps maybe the the biggest one of all, whenever our hearts grow dull, it grows dull out of sin. When when there's um, unrepentant, unconfessed, habitual sin. I, I call it like it's sin on repeat. Let me ask you, um, is there a sin that's on repeat in your life that you just keep going back to? That sin causes our hearts to become dull. It causes us to harden. It it might be for you this, this judgmental attitude. Like nothing ever, ever lives up to your standards. You know that's a sin, right? Like you find fault everywhere you look. You you can walk into church. Maybe this is you, walked into church today and you're looking at the chairs in front of you and you're thinking, these chairs are a lot closer than they were last week. I don't have as much room as I I had. Or the music was way louder than it normally is or they missed a lyric or he read something wrong and said the wrong word. If you're listening for that, you're probably going to hear that. Being critical, that, that's a sin for us. Is, is it, do you have anything that's on repeat in your life? It could be things like lust, things that, we, that you see. Do you just keep going back thinking, this is not going to hurt me. I'm, I'm okay. I'll, I'll, just, I'll deal with it. What is it? Sin that is on repeat in your life will harden your heart. It will cause your heart to get dull towards God. And so you might be thinking, God seems far away from me. I feel like God has abandoned me. He's not listening to me. It could be because of that right there. And then number three, and um, I think, from the last two are kind of lean very heavily on us, on you and I. I like this third one because um, of 
how it brings God into this. Number three, the possibility of why we feel abandoned by God is because your loving God is drawing you to him. See, God is always doing that. He's always drawing us to himself. We learn this by reading through scripture, but in one particular place in Acts chapter 17, Paul is in Athens. And he's there and he, he's talking to these people who are very religious. He looks around and he sees all the, the things that they're using to practice their religion. And in one of these places, there's an altar. And this, he, he sees this altar and on this altar is literally written to the unknown God. Like, like they, they, they want to worship God, but they don't know if they can really know God. And this is what he tells them. He says, you can you can know God. And he says this in verse 26. He says, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. Having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. That they should, and if you've got a Bible, underline this phrase, seek God. See, Paul's telling them that there's a God that he determined long ago that, they, that people would seek after him. And he says, and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. Paul says to these people, this, this God that you're looking for, this one that you don't think that you can, you can know and have a personal relationship with, no, he created everything. And he created everything in such a way so that you would seek after him. And when you seek after him, you would reach towards him. You would reach out to him and you'll find him. You'll find him. And not only will you find him, but you will know he's there with you always. Why is it that we uh, oftentimes maybe feel like God is far from us? Maybe that he has rejected us or abandoned us. It could really be because God is creating inside of us a hunger. See, what I've noticed in my own life, and I'm not saying this is true for you, but in my life when things are going well, I don't necessarily feel like I need God. When things are good, this is what I've noticed. It's things that draw me away from God. But when hard times come, when suffering comes, the very first thing I do is I turn to him like, I'm looking for you, God. God, I need, I need you. It's like the real enemy to my life, and, and I'm, I'm gonna say it's possibly yours as well, is comfort. The real enemy to your life is prosperity. It's having everything you need because when you think you have everything you need, you think you don't need God. I'll explain it to you like this. When Andrea and I were dating, we, we dated for two and a half years and we had a long distance relationship. And so when, when, when we were ever together, it, would, it was kind of easy maybe to, to, to take life for granted. But the moment we were apart, the moment she, her car pulled out of the driveway and she left, when I didn't know, okay, it's gonna be weeks before I would see her again, it's at that moment that I began to, to miss her. Even then, like I, I'm longing for her. God's the same way. It's like he wants us to long for him. I had a, not just a few weeks ago, um, my first grandchild, okay? I'm, I'm a pops now. And I, I gotta tell you, I don't go very many days at all without seeing my grandson. Why? Because I miss him. Like I, I miss holding him. I, I want to hold him in my arms because I want that time with him. In fact, this, this week, like it was so awesome because this week we, we had a little pops and Elliot moment, just me and him, nobody else around. And that's the face of a very happy Happy, happy man. 
Why am I happy? Because of my time with him. Let me tell you something about God. He wants that time with you. When God feels far away from you, it makes you long for him more. Look what it says. We just read it in Acts. It says, and they should seek God. Like God created us for this, that we would seek him and perhaps feel their way towards him. That, that phrase, feel their way towards him, means reach for him. And he says when they reached for him, that they would find him. And I love this last phrase, yet he is actually not far from each one of us. See, when you think God has forgotten you, when you think God is far away from you, when you think God has rejected you, when you think God has abandoned you, he's actually right there with you. He's right there with you. And just because you don't feel him, it doesn't mean that he's not present. You don't always feel him. You don't always trust your feelings because your feelings will lie to you. This past Monday, I got sucked into this thing that so many people do, this, this Murph challenge, you know. Some friends and some of my family members, they wanted to do it. And if you don't know what it is, it's stupid. Shouldn't, shouldn't, you shouldn't do it, but um, the challenge is simply this. You run a mile. You do 100 pull-ups, you do 200 push-ups, you do 300 squats, and then you try to run another mile. And um, I tried this on Monday, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. My feelings, my feelings were sending me some, some messages, a lot of messages, all week long. My feelings were sending me messages. My son-in-law was there, and he kept making this this statement to me that um, at the time didn't make any sense. He kept saying, pain is your friend. Pain is your friend. And I, I thought, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like, pain is not my friend. Are you kidding me? Nearly seven days later, though, on the other side of my pain, there's progress. Like this Weak when it comes to health and when it, when it comes to the way that I, I feel, I feel so much better. Now, I don't know who this is for. Uh, I believe that there are a lot of you, you're here today or you're watching on you know, the other side of a screen and I, I'm supposed to tell you this, pain is your friend. It's your friend. When it draws you closer to God. You don't always trust your feelings. They'll lie to you. Like sometimes you don't feel like going to work. What are you gonna do? You're just gonna quit? Like, how are you gonna pay your bills? How are you gonna take care of your family if that's, if that's what you do? Sometimes you, you don't feel like you love your spouse. You just, what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna walk away? No, you're, you're gonna do whatever it is that you did in the very beginning. That, that thing that attracted you to each other, you know, you're gonna start doing that. Sometimes you don't feel like you love your kids, like they just get on your nerves. But yet, deep down inside, you, you, you know you love them. What are you going to do? You're going to kick them out? No. No, you're not going to do that. You're going to hang in there with them. If you feel like God is far away from you, or that you feel like God has forgotten you, or that he's abandoned you, what do you do? You don't walk away from him. You don't blame him. No, you draw near to him. Will you 
ever feel like God is far? Will you ever feel like he's forgotten you, like like he's just ignoring you, maybe rejected you, abandoned you? You might, you might. But there will also be times when, and, and maybe it's today, when God uses the distance you feel to activate the faith you need. Can God do the extraordinary? Yes, he absolutely can. But lots of times he just uses the ordinary. This past Thursday, I'm on my way back home from a out of town funeral and just some things that were going on um, just had me really down and disappointed and angry and all this kind of stuff, all these feelings. And I opened up my Bible app. And the moment I opened up my Bible app, the daily refresh came up. And at that moment, there was a verse and there was a prayer. And let me tell you what, I felt like God wrote this verse and he wrote that prayer just for me. And I don't know how many weeks or months that go by when, you know, when they choose and they pick these verses that go out there. But what I do know is that in that moment, that little ordinary thing, God did something extraordinary in my life. See, God wants us to seek Him. God wants us to reach out for Him. So do that. And when you do that, you will find Him. You're having a hard time trusting Him right now? Reach out for Him. And it's just in the ordinary things. I don't know what it might be for you. Maybe you're sick and and like you don't know what's going on. There's no explanation for what's happening. What do you do? You just reach out to Him. You, You call on Him. It could be that a family member is suffering, they're in pain and and, and it's breaking your heart and you don't know what to do. You go to the one who does. You go to the one who has the power to touch, to heal. You may feel anxious, you may feel this pressure that builds up on your shoulders and you don't know what to do, you won't rest. Just in the ordinary, you turn to God. You reach out, you stretch. And what does he promise? You'll find him. When you seek him, you will find him. And so much of this is so good news. No matter what you're facing, no matter what overwhelms you right now. His word is true. And if you seek him, you will find him. So understand, that pain, that thing that you wish is not part of your life right now, it's your friend. It's your friend. When it draws you closer to God. Heavenly Father, I pray that whatever overwhelms us, whatever in our life completely terrifies us, whatever is challenging our faith, causing us to feel far from you, rejected by you, maybe even abandoned by you, may may we know it's that very thing that you want to use to draw us closer to you. I wonder how many of you would say that pastor, I, uh, I want to be close to God. Like I, I really 
I want to be close to Him. I, I want to reach for Him. I want to stretch for Him. I want to seek Him more than I've ever sought Him before because I want to be as close to Him as I possibly can be. If that's you, if that's your desire, your heart, would you, would you let it know, be known by just lifting up your hand? right back down so I want to say it one more time I wonder how many of you would say pastor I want to be as close to God as I can possibly get I want to reach for him stretch for him I want to seek him I want to be closer to him than I am right now if that is you if that is your prayer, would you raise your hand? And my prayer is that every hand in this place goes up. Heavenly Father, may we reach out for you. May we stretch for you. We're desperate. We need you. The world needs the light to be shined in the darkness and we are the light of the world and I pray that we as your people would seek after you more than ever before. For those that feel abandoned, for those that feel very far from you, Lord, use whatever it is in their life to draw them to you. Just those ordinary things, use it to draw them to you. I pray that maybe there's a sin in their life that, that is on repeat right now that they need to repent of, turn from, walk away from, that's keeping them from feeling close to you. Lord, give them the courage, give them the boldness to step away, to surrender that thing to you right now. As you continue to pray with no one looking around, there are some of you here, it's very important that you know that God is seeking after you. God designed you to reach out for Him. God, He did that. God wants you to know Him. He wants a relationship with Him. And the only way to have that is through Jesus. And there are some of you here, like you, 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 you kind of feel this in your heart, but you've never done anything with it. But today, I wanna to give you that opportunity, like right now, you can say yes to Jesus. And Jesus will forgive you of your sins. Jesus will draw you near to the Father who loves you so much. And if you've never said yes to Him, why not do it right now? You might think, well, Pastor, I don't know what to do. Right where you are, right where you are with your, your, your head bowed, your eyes are closed, but your heart is open to Him. Why don't you just say yes to Jesus? Like, like just, call out to him say this just there's nothing magical about the words that i'm gonna say but it's it's the posture of your heart it's what you mean from your heart just say jesus i need you go ahead right now jesus i need you jesus forgive me of my sins jesus make me right with god today i'm turning from my life of sin go ahead tell him this i'm turning from my life of sin to a life surrendered to you I'm all yours Jesus I'm all yours today I'm giving you my life if that was your prayer Jesus Christ just saved you your sins have been forgiven if that was your prayer wherever you are I'm going to ask you to do something I'm going to ask you to tell me and the way that you tell me is simply by lifting your hand. If you prayed that prayer with me, would you just simply slip up your hand and say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer. I said yes to Jesus. Wherever you are, just lift it up and hold it up right now. Will you do that? And if you said yes to Jesus, then you can let us know by texting the number on the screen. Just say, I said yes. And Pastor Lance will reach out. He will connect with you. And then let one of our hosts know, our online hosts know in the chat room so we can go ahead and get connected right now as you're watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has been a special Sunday getting to celebrate all of our graduates and just jumping into summer. We're gonna have a great time here over the next couple of weeks. So we hope that you guys will come back and join us as Pastor Lance starts a new message series. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you and we'll see you.